my third published work uh, was uh, turned out to be a collection called The Doctor and the Heretic and Other Stories. Now, after I finished composing the Columbine Pilgrim, uh, I was really, really uh, excited to write, and I felt very, I, I felt like the muses were singing to me, I, and I felt this way for an extended period of time, from around 2010 till maybe early 2014. It was like, I could just write. I mean, inspiration just came to me very easily, and uh, it was a very, very fruitful period uh, as a writer. Um, I think that with Columbine Pilgrim, like a, a dam had broken open. I'd written a little bit of fiction before, but with Columbine Pilgrim, it was like, I, I forgot to say this when I was talking about Columbine Pilgrim, but when I was writing Columbine Pilgrim, I thought, for some reason, I thought to myself, I really have to finish this, this, uh, this work. I have to finish writing uh, this manuscript. I don't want to die before I finish writing this manuscript. I remember thinking that, and even though I didn't have I, I, that I know of any any uh, any health problems that I that I knew of, um, I still just felt this uh, this urgency to finish, which I've never felt before or since. Um, so it was like a feverish rush to get this thing finished. Not that I, you know, not that I was, I mean, I wanted it to be good too. It wasn't like I just, you know, I, I was, I felt focused and I felt inspired, but I also felt just uh, like kind of alarmed at the whole idea that maybe this won't get finished. Maybe this won't get published. Maybe the, the world will never see the Columbine Pilgrim. That just really troubled me. So... A after that, after I wrote it and and uh, uh, I realized I can do, I can write fiction. It's something I hadn't done for a while. Uh, then the whole idea of fiction writing uh, really, really appealed to me, and I, I thought I'm going to keep going with it. So, um, so the doctor and the heretic. I thought I would write a story from the point of view of a woman. That was a like an interesting um, kind of exercise for me. And at the time, I had a muse. I'm not going to go into detail about this, but there was somebody who who I modeled the main character after. Uh, you know, I, I sometimes, like I say, I've said before, sometimes I have muses sometimes they're not people sometimes they're they're events or you know like Columbine or they're uh, I don't know something else but in this case the muse was was a woman and uh, it was a woman who whom I was taken with enamored with um, but not someone I you know ever was in a relationship with it was more of an infatuation um, <clears throat> so I made her into the main, the, 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 uh, the main character, like the story was told from her point of view. It was third person, but it was still told from her perspective. And she is a psychiatrist, um, and she sees a troubled young patient, and the troubled young patient was of course, some version of me, <laughs> uh, as a younger man with, uh, with greater allure, uh, more, uh, more sexiness than I ever possessed, <laughs> but still was my alter ego, <clears throat> troubled in a lot of the same ways that I had been troubled, uh, you know, struggling in the ways that I, that I had struggled earlier in my life and still struggle now in many ways. 
uh, not gonna lie. Um, and so there the inspiration was, you know, to write this, to, 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 it was, it was really like, I, I wanted to write about, uh, I wanted to write a sexy book, uh, or a sexy story, but not for the sake of the, the loins, you know, not for the sake of, like, guttural, um, or pornographic, or, or, or ignoble, you know, I wanted to write something that was, that was erotic, uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, n noble strain of erotica that has existed for, for a while, you know, going all the way back to the Bible, the Song of Solomon, um, and so, I, I felt like, uh, like the whole the whole idea of writing a romance story, a kind of effed up romance story, uh, you know, held some appeal. And um, the dynamic of the uh, psychiatrist, an older but still, still attractive. Uh, and, and you know, still very much there, uh, psychiatrist who's in her forties, who's seeing this troubled young patient that that she feels a, a strange bond with, uh, who's in his twenties, mid twenties. So there's like a twenty year, uh, you know, difference between them. Um, but the 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 whole idea that you know there there's this. Uh, I think that when there are uh, rules and like uh, boundaries that you're not supposed to cross for good reason, you know, I should say, I believe that, well, I don't know if I believe in psychiatry really very much, but let's just say if psychiatry works, um, even if it doesn't work, I understand or psychology, I, uh, I, I do think that it's it's true that uh, doctors and patients should never uh, there's that that line should never be crossed. Even if there is attraction, it shouldn't it should be something that the doctor sees to it doesn't uh, doesn't happen. You know, the, uh, but the fact that something like that that there could be uh, romantic or sexual tension between these two characters who are in this doctor patient relationships this therapist patient relationship um, you know was was a turn on it was it was it, it was um, it made it more interesting to write uh, so um, and it, so I, I was writing from a, a woman's point of view and you know, it was, it was, uh, there was an, in, there was, who, and I was writing about a woman, or I was using as a template, or as inspiration, as a, as, as a muse, this woman who actually knew, who I actually knew, who actually existed, um, and, uh, so I, I was using her, but I was also, you know, giving her her own backstory, which wasn't the backstory at all of the of the woman, the woman who was the inspiration for for me writing this 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 book, uh, this story, um, and and so she has this uh, she and the uh, and her troubled young patient, you know, go through this this. Uh, This thing together, they they find out things about themselves, uh, and it draws them together, eventually, uh, in, into uh, a forbidden romance. Of course, the, you know it all goes in that direction, and um, but then I wanted the ending to be a little bit, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I find ambiguity is always is often very satisfying. Some people don't like ambiguity at all. 
but sometimes to me an ambiguous ending is the most satisfying ending that uh, a book or a story can have because it leaves certain things open not things are always open you know in life things might go a certain way or they might go another way um, so after our two main characters uh, you know get together you say saying that euphemistically you know you know what I mean when I say that though they get together uh, after that there's some question of uh, you know what happens from there where does it, where does it go from there but uh, we know that this that uh, this woman this this therapist who has again uh, broken uh, I guess it's not a vow but it's like a, it's like an ethical command not to get involved with, with the patient she's she's in this situation of course where she's quite vulnerable but I liked to end it on the note of devotion that she was she was going to follow her heart she was going to be uh, she was devoted to this new love in her life even though he wasn't he was still not sure he was still a little freaked out by what had happened between them and the way that it ends the last thing that I have her say is uh, is something taken I remembered from the end of the movie Spartacus where Spartacus is being played by Kirk Douglas is being crucified and uh, the woman who was who was in love with him I don't remember who she was if she was his, if she was his wife or 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 what what she was uh, uh, but, but she, she's riding away it's a very sad scene and she says uh, farewell my love my life farewell and in a way it's a really cheesy scene but it's really affecting too um, like, I, like I'm tearing up a little uh, just just remembering it and I, I wanted uh, the last words of the therapist to, to resemble those last words uh, that uh, this woman speaks to, uh, to Spartacus, this doomed sort of figure. Um, so that was The Doctor and the Heretic. Um, two other stories were attached to that, uh, that story, which was, you know, short, sort of longer short story length, novella length. I don't write anything that long. I rarely write anything long. And the two stories that were attached were uh, were Tears of the Damned, the, uh, the, the the short story, the Columbine short story, uh, counterfactual, in which Dylan Klebold grows up without ever having committed the, the massacre, the Columbine massacre, um, and uh, where, where things go for him from there, uh, and also something that I wrote called. Uh, called something like god I can't remember the I don't I don't remember the title right now uh, of the third story in this group but it was something about uh, chronicles of a violent soul um, um, memoirs of a violent soul something of something of a violent soul it's been a little while <laughs> but uh, that <laughs> that work also begins. <laughs> that begins with a, a guy. Um, <laughs> God, um, like uh, thinking about cutting his penis and testicles off, and it's somewhat graphic. <laughs> and then he goes back and remembers things. Um, and uh, that that story is very autobiographical. I've got to say, there's really nothing in it that's not autobiographical, except the part where he's uh, about to cut off his penis and testicles. I've never, never come close to doing that. It's only been a, you know, a hypothetical thing for me. Um, but he remembers 
his uh, the, the the days of his sexual uh, awakening. I hate to put it that way because it was much more of a traumatic thing for him, um, and the the things that it led him to do the the, the, the sort of uh, desperation that that uh, the desperate state that it brought him to. Um, and again, this character is very much like like the character in uh, like Tony Meander and like the character in Diary of a Suicide. He's somebody who has very extreme views uh, and doesn't hold back. And he says some things that are quite blasphemous. Um, and that, you know, I as an observant Catholic, I don't say devout, I don't call myself devout, but uh, I don't think I have the right to call myself devout, but I'm an observant Catholic, but these are things that I would never, I would never say as myself, but as my alter ego, my shadow self, you know, there's a lot of things in the, there that uh, he is, uh, he... I was freed up to say that are quite shocking. And there's also some details. You know, it's also quite a sexually charged work. Uh, um, he, he talks about um, basically feeling up or uh, subtly feeling up this girl who sits next to him uh, in, in class. Uh, with his knee <laughs> he sticks his knee out and uh, it catches the back of her skirt and maybe she feels his knee there maybe she doesn't um, but she's like uh, she, cro she crosses her legs and she's one leg is bouncing on top of, an, up top of the other and he feels the vibration uh, with his knee <laughs> on, uh, on her backside or at least touching the skirt attached to her backside. Um, so that's uh, you know another. It's another pretty, uh, pretty like I said, pretty sexual, sexually charged book. But it's written from the point of view of somebody who wants to, who wants to become a eunuch because he thinks that sex has warped him. Which is a uh, a point of view that I you know have considered many times myself. So that's that's um, um, that's this work, the Doctor and the Heretic, and other stories, which was published by a company initially that uh, that went under. I don't remember the name of the company. Forgive me, but uh, he published it, and then. Uh, and then he, his company sort of ceased to be, and then I, I, I self-published, uh, or I published it, I republished it again through Ann Sturzinger's, uh, uh, her, her sort of, uh, press that she was, that she was, uh, that she had at the time, but it was basically through, uh, through Amazon, um, through the Amazon system. Of self-publishing, which, well, I, I, I'm not a fan of Amazon. I'm not a fan of, of a globalist, evil globalist, uh, uh, like Bezos, and others. I've got to say that the Amazon self-publishing system is very user-friendly. Um, so I'll, I'll give them that. And they've never censored me. They haven't censored any of my work yet. So, uh, so I'll, you know, give them credit for that. Um, anyway, that was the, uh, uh, the Doctor and the Heretic and other stories.